Okay, ready? One, two, three. Yo, what's up, You know who it is. Big Bad Sam Rock back at it again. Here with another episode. Season two. Episode two with my boy, the homie, my friend, Griffin Guerr. <laughs> Thanks for churching up, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank Griffin you. Guerr, appreciate bro. You, appreciate thank you. you. <laughs> so, thank you for, uh, you know, making time tonight. Making yep. sure... Uh, it's a busy schedule, bro. No, I, I know. Fit you in. I know, I know, bro. You've been busy all week. Been busy all year. Um, I kind of want to get into what we've been doing this past week, but also what you've been doing for the past year and what you've been producing and kind of feel like you're really locked into your craft right now. Sure. But um, right now, I just want to give a shout out to the listeners, uh, the viewers on YouTube. Thank you guys for rocking with us. I just want to say we appreciate, you know, you guys engaging with us and really supporting what we do. Hope you guys walk away with some insights, some gems. Um, so shout out to you guys, all the listeners and viewers. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to give a quick story real quick. A little backstory. Uh, how how we met. So, because I thought it was very, it's always been intriguing to me how we met. And I always walked away very perplexed. Perplexed? Yeah, very perplexed. I was in a quagmire oh. after our meeting. Nice word is so, usage. That's where we take a break and then we... We get into it? Then, yeah, we leave it on a cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Good episode. Perfect. We're just going to talk about the... Is it... We met at the Sears Tower? So, nope. Shout out to my... Did we meet at Sears Tower? Sears Tower? You came in a boneyard too, but I know you, at the Sears Tower you're up there too. I don't remember that. I'll talk about the time I remember meeting okay. you. Okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> the time I remember meeting you is a uh, shout out to our boy Jeremy, who is the connector of all people in this city. Um, he hit me up, was like, yo, my boy uh, Griffin wants to chop it up with you, just have a conversation, talk about your, you know, what you do and what he does. And, you know, and I was like, oh, Griffin, who works at Boneyard. I was like, yeah, of course I know him. So, I was very, I was like, yeah, of course we could chop it up. Oh my God, excuse me. <clears throat> I'm getting choked up. No, it's a little cray. I like the No, so, makes you feel bad. so you support you at this time you were working at Boneyard. And yep. then uh do you remember that story? I do. All right, go ahead. Take it go? from here. Go take it from here, pal. No, man, this is your show. I don't want to take <laughs> over. Now I remember um because I had an idea and I wanted to chop it up with you to see if we could bring it into fruition. Mm -hmm. And we made it uh restaurant share we shared banana pudding man our first time meeting yeah. i remember that yeah two spoons though <laughs> two spoons but i wanted i had an idea where i wanted <laughs> him to paint uh paint basketball hoops yeah because at the time i was thinking about going with other artists and then i just narrowed it down to him i wanted to paint basketball hoops and throw them up in alleys and shoot them and kind of just leave them for the neighborhoods just pick different like where he lived do one and then we went from there to turn it into a little a little show mm -hmm. I thought it was dope, man, because I feel like that's just my whole DNA as a creative, too. Doing stuff that reflects our culture and then giving it back yep. and documenting it, too. But the part that really threw me off was that you were so... You had zero confidence in what you wanted to do. It was my first endeavor into that world. Yeah, and I was just like, man, I was like, I just thought that was so perplexed because... In, in the world, you know, in this art world, you meet people who are either overly confident. Yeah. They'll sell you an idea that's like, yo, like that's been done a hundred times and it's not that dope. And, you know, they're trying to sell you this idea and they have overconfident. But with you, I'm like, yo, you have a dope eye. You have a pulse on what's going on in the culture. Like, you yeah. know, you working at Boneyard and you seen what was popping, what was dope. Yep. And you meet a ton of people. So I'm like, I thought that would give you a sense of confidence. Yeah. But it went from, I'm a photographer. I don't know how that works. Mm -hmm. Also, like the art world. It's like I knew you were, I don't want to pump you up, but like big time. You know what I mean? And it's like, I'm just, I've never, yeah, run that back. <laughs> Loop that. But no, I just, I you know, I, got that. I had an idea. <laughs> yeah. I had an idea and I just didn't know. Like, yeah. I wanted to pitch it, but I also am like, this fool's like, he's not going to give a shit. Like, I thought you might, but at the same time, like, would he, at your level, would you want to just leave a hoop in an alley? Like mm. with your artwork. Right. And so I was I struggled with that idea because I mean, obviously you want to make money off shit. 
right. stuff. And um, I don't know, I just was didn't know how to approach an artist to want to give away free art at that point. Right. Yeah, so then we had the meeting, and I was like, I was like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Like, whatever, like, let's make it happen. Because I already loved that approach to it, you know. Yeah. Uh, me being a street artist, I always want to get back to the streets. And then, um, so I think I walked away just very like, like, wow, like, I'm surprised this man does not just... Typically, when you meet people in this industry, they're just, you know, they're the, they've are the they done the most, they know yeah, everybody, they got everything, they have, yeah. you know, they don't, you know, they try to sell you this, like, whole pipe dream. Yeah. And I could typically see right through all that BS, but you were just very honest, you know. Um, but I want to talk about somebody, your past, and then how you said how you kind of got into it, because I think it's interesting, you were, what, in early 30s, late 20s when we had that conversation? Uh, yeah, I think 30. Yeah, 30. 30. So that's a a, a topic that I kind of want to discuss, like talk about you being that, being washed at that trying. age. No, no, no. No. <laughs> no, I think it comes with experience of life, yeah. you know, being at that age and deciding I want to strive for this creative industry. True. Because if you don't mind giving, you know, give the audience a little bit of backstory of who you are, where you come from. You don't have to go as deep as yeah. you want to go, but what your backstory is because it wasn't the creative field. Yeah. You know? Now I came from like a retail, like resale industry. I was selling, I've always like sold stuff, never any illegal narcotics, but like in little, in middle school and stuff, selling candy bars, mm -hmm. stuff like that, hustling, anything I could sell. Like my mom was known for sweet tea. My mom used to sell snow cones. So like I've always known like just the hustle, like speaking. And I've always kind of liked that. I just like to sell stuff. So I started selling some shoes. I'd wear shoes, sell them. Wear a hat, sell it. Just keep flipping it and get new stuff. And that's kind of how it's always been. And then whenever stuff got bigger for me when I was in Sacramento, it was kind of when I got into photography. And I started to learn to appreciate like artwork and just setting up photos better, I guess. And then when I got here doing photos and seeing like there's a market for art. Like, because I had no idea. Like, I know sports. Real quick, you, sk you skimmed over what brought you here, though. I want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people know. Yeah, so I've been a reseller. I had a store with my my guy, Drew Kelso. We were doing online stuff. And then uh, I ran into some issues with Amazon. Right on Christmas morning, they booted me and then held like $20,000 for four months. But from me being in vintage, I knew the Boneyard guys. And so I was talking to Jake from Boneyard. And uh, he's like, man, since things are going south out there whatever if we're starting to gain some steam out here would you like to come to chicago and help us out so within a month what uh what year was that uh man when did i get here 2018 or 2019 i can't remember the year exactly but amazon really screwed up my life and so i was out there broke just selling stuff and i was that was when i was getting deep into photography and stuff and then um i packed up i sold what i could sell and i packed up my car and drove to chicago and i was sleeping on tony's uh couch for like two weeks and just working then I started working seven days a week just hustling trying to get a spot and then I found a spot close to the store and that's basically it man yeah it's I'll, dope man yep but that's dope so yeah that's what brought you to Chicago yeah and then that's what maybe a couple years later we had that conversation it was I think that might have been within the first year of me being in Chicago yeah or maybe the second so you talked about a little bit while you're in Sacramento, you got into photography. Yeah. Um, so when did you see that as something you wanted to keep doing? And when did you see your photography as something that you were like confident in? Yeah. Like what age? And then I don't know, anything like that yeah, you want to give us. Honestly, man, I always kind of, I didn't even realize whenever Instagram started being good that you there was like people use nice cameras and put it on Instagram. I thought they were using their phone and taking photos. Like I had no idea that you could take a photo and put it on Instagram. Like, I thought it had to be from the phone. Yeah. So I'd be trying to take, like, these artsy-fartsy, like, shoe photos, and I couldn't understand why they look different. Mm. And then I, then I started researching cameras, and then it just kind of went from... I was just always trying to take a, a good photo of a sneaker or a hat to sell. And then I got into Estevan Oreo, because my girlfriend at the time had the L.A. Fingers shirt. Yeah. I thought that was, like, the, the coolest shirt ever. Yeah. And then, so I started researching Estevan, and then other photographers and then I'm always in the thrift so I found a camera 
and I, I like like that style of shooting, like people, street art or street photography. But in Sacramento, you might see the same like one person on six blocks. Right. But it's not like New York where you can just snap and dip. Like you do something, somebody's gonna wonder why the hell you're taking their photo. Right, right. And I was hooping at the park out there, and then I, I just my guy at the time was like, "Why don't you just start bringing the camera up there and shooting while you're hooping? Because you're cool with everybody." And that's kind of how it grew. And I just started going to the park, shooting. I got the blessings from the OG Tim. He was like the the godfather of Tint and P. Right. He brings the popsicles, the watermelons for the kid. Like he's just the coolest dude. And then once I got that and just got cool with people, I ended up making the um, Sacramento's like top Instagram accounts to follow. I was in a mag- yeah, I was in a mag- Okay, give it up, bro. Man, Sacramento's best, you know that. You know Zach's from Sacramento. He knows the vibe. What, what is the Sac Reader or whatever the free joint? Uh, yeah. When they do like the best of. Uh yeah. They do like the best restaurant, the best whatever. Yeah. I so I hit that, which I thought was sick. You don't know, dude. No, <laughs> no I, he was. In- it's been such a long time. Yeah. Forgot your roots, dude. I do. What a buster. I know. <laughs> Shout out to all our Sacramento listeners. Yes. Which is two. probably just Zach's family. Yeah. Shout out to you guys. <laughs> Zach's family and probably Tevis. Maybe yeah. we might get Schwiz on here since yeah. it's, it's family related. For real. But uh, yeah, that was it. And it just kind of gave me like the hustle. But I was I was only shooting film, man. So I was going, I was shooting film, selling sneakers. And I was just going broke, like, because mm-hmm. it's expensive to shoot film. So it was like I was just selling sneakers to fund some shit that wasn't making money, but it was like my passion project. Right. And that kind of helped me just learn that you can make money off photos. You know what's crazy is typically, you know, when I have these conversations with people and ask them when they thought about it, they're like, oh, since I was a kid, I da-da-da. Or yeah. even for me, you know, when I was a kid. But for you to discover it at your age, um, I think that's really dope and is is unique, you know? Because yeah. typically you hear people... That are now, now you see the crossing of like those intersections of street culture, basketball, yeah. or people on the streets with photography, with what's going on in, um, you know, um, I guess like fashion and everything. Yeah. It's all crossing now. Yep. But it's dope to see you at a time you're like, I just love doing this. Yeah, it was you are you were into you know what you're into reselling. Yeah, and, it was just my life. Like that's yeah. what I've been doing forever. So just kind, it's kind of cool that it's cool now. But if it wasn't cool now, I'd still be doing the same shit. Like, yeah, and I'll still be doing the same shit. I wear the same clothes I wore ten years. You know what I'm saying? Like I might switch it, but like I look the same, I dress the same, the same shit over and over. And yeah, whether it's cool or not, I'm gonna keep doing that shit stuff. Sorry. Nah, no, you're good, man. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so let's circle back to we had that conversation. It might have been what months later. Yeah, I think it was still kind of started to. Yeah. Uh, and you know, with that idea, you did, you took some shots out, but we also did a show here. Yep. And I think that was probably your first experience first. of showing you know an yeah. idea that you had. I did that little thing with Reebok when I first came. That little yeah. uh, through the lens, and that was like my first real taste of showing my work. Before I left Sacramento, I was going to possibly do a show out there with the clothing company. Mm-hmm. Shout out to All Good and Mark for trying to, if you're listening. I doubt it. But uh, that happened, and I just didn't know uh, what the hell to do. And that kind of gave me, like, I like that 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 energy. Because my photos were different than everyone's. We're shooting Reebok Classics. I shot an old school. Like, I had to do Impala. Right. Like, I shot what I thought people looked like who wear Reebok Classics. Right. And everybody else is doing front flips and like uh, by the water and shit. Like that's not a Reebok classic, classic style, you know? And I felt like that. I just like the energy and the reception I got from people like, oh, this is like, that's dope. That's what I think of when I think Reebok classics. Right. And I just like, like, I don't know, it felt good. Like people effed with my stuff. Bro, it's okay. You could cuss, bro. I know. I just feel bad, bro. But yeah, it was cool. It's a good feeling when people show love. My, and my demo was definitely, yeah, yeah, it's definitely all adults. So. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it just, it's a good feeling. And I was like that. And then once we did it, and that's kind of what made me want to do some more, just to have photos to show, possibly one day, like do a show like that. Yeah, because shortly after that, I know it wasn't because you were just making so much money, but no. shortly after that, you left your Red Bone and you left yeah. Boneyard. Still not making much money. But yeah, it was just kind of after being in that industry for so long and like the way it shifted from like, I sound like a gatekeeper, but it went from like people I was cool with and you could like see somebody wearing a shoe. 
mm-hmm. and wearing an outfit. I'm like, okay, I've got common interests with that dude. Like he right. understands to where it's like clones. Everyone looks the same. And like the products that were coming out, just, I didn't care about Like mm-hmm. I couldn't, I couldn't care less about Supreme, any of that, like off white and the customers. And I couldn't continue to fake that conversation. Like, oh yeah, you got to cop this. I'm like, I don't care, bro. I, I remember having a conversation yeah. with you about, even with basketball stuff. So the first project we did together was we created the, like those OG in the alley, bas- milk crates, yeah. you know, homemade basketball, very Chicago style. Miniature milk crates at that. Never, yeah. never done before and probably You never had them got- 3D printed. Yeah. Um, Just hanging back there, Zach, you can see it. <laughs> yeah, we have a couple. Um but just even talking about basketball, how you were like, but this is so authentic to your life and yeah. to where you were in your life. Um, and then how you would be frustrated with people who you felt like were perpetuating a exactly. lifestyle or something that they thought was cool, but they have no... I remember one time we met up with somebody, yeah. you know, and they wanted to do something and their whole brand is about basketball. But don't hoop. Or they don't hoop. They didn't know nothing what? about like... Yeah, it's just, I don't, it, there's a lot of people like that. And you can look at, like, you can say, like, the lowriders, you know, yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, Chicano yeah. culture, whatever, ha- like, that became an aesthetic, you know what I'm right. saying? Like, oh, we got to do this. And it's like, I think that's what, what makes us cool is that we have that same old man bitterness of, like, yeah. you don't know nothing about <laughs> yeah. this shit right here. Like, we, you know what I mean? It's like, but sure. it's still, it's like, we appreciate somebody. You do, you create something because you're connected to that in one yeah. way or another. You For know? sure. Yep. And it's more authentic too. Like, it's just like you see people just chasing what's hot, mm-hmm. and it's like that shit's got to get old quick. Like continually, like sack chasing. Like, oh, this is hot. I gotta, you know, what I mean, I gotta do this. Oh, we're blowing bubbles now in photography. I gotta blow bubbles. We got sparkles. I gotta. It's like just stay true to who you are and your brand, and whether it takes fifteen years, right. ten years, whatever. Whenever you get a, like to where you want to be. Like people, it'll feel better because you just did you. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that, the longevity of just staying authentic to yourself, like you can't lose. And that's how I feel like. That's why I've always kind of just stayed with my, my shit, the way I do it. I think it's a trip to hear that you found um, basically your voice later on in your life. Yeah. And a lot of artists Cause it, don't I even mean, find their voice. Yeah. I, and they've been working for Where I'm from, time. there's no, there's a couple people who do art. But it's never been like, if you were a photographer, it's like you're shooting school pictures, you're doing like the Little League photos. Mm. But I never knew, like I never even knew you could make, like even when I met him, it like opened my world like, oh shit, this is how people, like this is murals, this is paintings, like this is how that shit works. Like it was all brand new to me. I knew sneakers and sports, like that's it. And then that, I don't know, it's just cool to see like you can make money in art. By doing just, you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. Especially yeah. coming from Sacramento, and I'm sure, I'm sure you know. It yeah. was just like, just totally blew my mind. Yeah. Coming to Chicago. I was like, wait, what? It's a whole different hustle here. Totally. When different. I left Sacramento, it was kind of like that artist bloom. Mm-hmm. But it, it was just like, you could tell they were behind. Like, I'd go to the yeah. Bay and see stuff, but it wasn't like, Chicago's just a different beast it's altogether. Super different, yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. <clears throat> All right. Let's, uh, if, if you're cool, can we talk about what you're doing now? Yeah. So, no. you know, we did a show, we did a thing, and then, uh, you know, 2020 happened. Yeah. And, um, I feel like that was a, a cross, you know, crossroads for a lot of people, a lot of creatives, what direction you, you they want to go, go into. And I yeah. felt like you really went head first into your, you know, no your choice. creativity. Yeah. And uh, can you talk about a little bit of what you're working on now? And I guess maybe even like how you got into what I'm doing, what you're doing. Yeah. Man, when I left, because I left the city, I ended up quitting Boneyard, leaving the city, went through a breakup. You know what I mean? Just a bunch of stuff happened. And I I never took time to, even when I moved to Sacramento, like I, I touched down and went to work and I started working seven days a week. Oof. And I never processed all the shit that I went through from moving from like graduating college, moving to California, doing this. You know what I mean? And then, um, so I, like when I first got cool with him, it was like right whenever things started doing well for like my art stuff, mm-hmm. I just fuck. I left the city. I went to see my family downstate. 
And then that that was kind of it. And I was just so like, what well, heartbreak and boredom, bro. You just start diving into shit. You yeah. Know? Uh-huh. And at the time, I was bitter. I didn't, you know, what I mean, I was hooping, I was doing stuff, but I didn't have anything to do with my time, like to preoccupy my mind. And then I just started messing around. With, I saw a video of people like hydro dipping Air Force Ones, and it looked like shit. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I can do, I can do that better. You know what I'm saying? I'm and then, that. so I just started messing around with that and then it took off. Like, I'm like, I can do that better because they were horrible. And then I started like dipping boards. I started doing the miniature crates and putting them on the hydro dip board basket. And then I was like, I'm going to start doing basket. I didn't, I looked, I didn't see anyone hydro dipping basketballs and it's still on brand for what, what I do. And I kept doing that. And then people liked that. And I kept growing and I saw people doing planners. I'm like, well, shit. I'm going to do planners. And I started messing with concrete basketballs and incense holders and just started diving in just to kill time. Which is crazy if you think about, if somebody were to talk to you, like, oh, he's a photographer. And then now you're like, all right, now I do cement, concrete, planner head. I do basketball. I do so much different stuff. And it's crazy. You probably wouldn't even have thought that for yourself five years ago. You know what I mean? Like. Like, yo, this man's a full artist. Yeah, never. Because you kind of, in high school, you were more of like, I, I guess, I, an athlete jock type yeah, of person. Yeah, I was a jock. But I was, I guess the art that I was into would be like Slam Magazine to me was like the ultimate like art because I would always look at, I loved like the street ball photos. I would always look at that stuff. And I think that's what shaped, you could say, my voice, I guess. you could, Like, yeah. I like that aesthetic. Like, I've always liked Slam Magazine. Like, that was my life. I would just read Slam Magazine all through school. Uh, I think yeah. it's dope because those two worlds were always so, uh, like polar opposites. Yeah, you know, it's like if you did art, you definitely didn't do sports. If you yeah. did sports, you weren't over here painting and like exactly. But now it's know. like you see so many people, painters that are basketball players or vice. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, it's like you can be really like you could be whatever you want to be. Exactly. You could love being in tune with. Create yeah. the aesthetic of how your life yeah. is. You could be, but also still want to go, you know, pump weights at the gym and yep. shoot hoops and whatever. For sure. But, yep. All right. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll kind of start wrapping this up. But um, is there anything that you want to do? So right now, you know, what you're doing, you're getting some steam yeah. with the basketballs. We just got done working on these concrete planter heads. What do you think is next? Have you thought about that? Yeah, I want to um, continue to grow. Like, I want to do bigger things. Mm. Just like, I feel like that's like the natural evolution is like to do bigger pieces. Okay. That's why I started doing like dipping like whole basketball hoops yeah. and doing things like that. Just because I mean, they're cool, but I'd like to see bigger. Yeah. Just start doing random things and obviously just trying to navigate how you can live off this shit a little better right. without the struggle. I think that's, you know, that's everybody's. Yeah. That's why we do these podcasts too, to have conversations with other creatives that are making it, are making a living off of it. Yeah. You know, like for me to say I'm a professional artist, what does that look like? You know, when I was a kid, I didn't know. Either I thought you were the superstar Picasso or I thought you were an art teacher. Yeah. You know, but now it's like we're learning with social media, with everything that you can live off your art. Yeah. You for know. sure and i feel like t- not to toot my own horn but i take like really ill photos i can do really cool shit with painting or doing whatever and it's like there's got to be i'm still trying to find out like because I'm, I'm baby in this you know what i mean like in the art like maybe been doing sh- for like three years you know right. and how it takes you uh, you know what i mean like you go through your whole life to find like right. that lane and right. so i'm still trying to figure out what what i can do with my skill set without having to work for anyone else or do whatever to how I can really eat off what I see because I've been through, I've been on a lot of sides of the coin, I guess you could say. And now I'm just trying to figure out like how to really promote myself. Cause I, like you said, like when I came to you, I don't like to promote myself. I don't like to talk about my, like I'm big shit, whatever. Like I, I've never been like that. <laughs> and it's hard because I feel like an art, you need that bravado for people to really like you. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm just kind of cool, like, all right, you, you can be the cool guy, like, I'll just... Yeah, yeah, I see that all the time, you know, yeah. like, the artist that is so confident in what they do, even if it's, whether I think it's dope or not, Yeah. but they believe in it, 
you know, and at the yeah, end of the day, that's all really matters. True. Whether I want to like it to like to admit it or not, yeah, that's all that really matters. Like you, I could draw a circle on a piece of paper, and if I really believe that circle for whatever reason I drew that, yeah, that matters to me. You know, that's that's all that matters. You yeah. know, it's all about storytelling. That's what I'm trying to learn too: is be a better storyteller and make everything have a meaning. Mm-hmm. Like, cause there's reasons you do everything. Not even realizing it. And then being able to look at that meaning, like why you did this colorway or why you wanted to do this and be able to translate it to where other people can understand it. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like that just adds value to what you do. I think that's why I would get so frustrated with conceptual artists because, you know, you go to a museum, you see a, a full canvas that's just white. Yeah. And then, you know, you're like, all right, what is this? And then there's a whole two page discourse about it, of why it's white. And then I would be intrigued by that. Like, yeah. oh, that's very interesting. Um, and then I'm like, if I just knew how to talk about what I do, you know, yeah, man, so, or even understood why we do what we do. And I think, yeah, just even like that, I would go to museums and I wouldn't appreciate it enough because I would see stuff. I'm like, bro, I could do that. And maybe that's what got me here is because I saw somebody trying to paint a shoe and I'm like, man, I could do that. And you don't appreciate, you know what I mean? Like you don't appreciate like there's a couple random, but it's like how you present it and how you tell it. Like, oh, okay, that brush stroke means this, this, that. And it's like, oh, okay. There's like deeper meaning to just like simple shit. Well, like, uh, you know, like Picasso says, he's like, there's a, you know, it took me my whole lifetime to draw how I'm drawing now. And then in his later works, his works were very, um, they could look very minimal or they looked almost childlike. Yeah. And, you know, that was his approach. He was like, it took me my lifetime to kind of be able to, learn all the rules and then to break all the rules to True. create how I want to create and say what I want to say. Yeah. I feel that. Uh, so is there anything you want to leave us with? Thank you for having me, man. Thanks for uh, burning my, I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. Making me lose my fingerprints. Come <laughs> yeah, up here. You know, if you're listening, <laughs> we've been working on these uh, concrete planter heads and I think, um, I'm not sure where we're going to win. But uh, plan yeah. on presenting me soon. Zoom in on this one right here. <clears throat> Can we get the zoom? The zoom, zoom action. Come on, guys. No. Oh yeah, we need you to do the sand rock intro. Yeah. Okay. Right now. I know you know what it is. I don't you even know what tell it, you. you. You like put a little twang on it. Let me get it. Stuff was you know who it is. Yeah, Big you, bad Griffin. You hit Griff, a little Griffin. Griffin. You hit a Wari. Wari. Yeah, oh, you've been what? practicing, dude. No, On the whole, I, the whole drive up. Yeah, the whole right here, turn right in the middle, bro. What's up, fools? You know who it is. What's up, fools? You know who it is. Big bad Griff dog back at it again. Yeah. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Griff, Guillermo, Griffando. Shout out to Sin Rock, man. He changed my life. The Sin Rock effect. Sin Rock effect is real. Now, if there's any uh, sugar mamas out there, I'm trying to move back to Chicago. I would love to get paid to maybe send a dirty sock. Um, we free planners. <laughs> yeah, when? I can work. I can make planners. I'm pretty. You can ask Machi. I do the dishes. Um, when, you, when you find one, let me know. Yeah, but I'm if there's anyone, too. you know what I mean. Any uh, any plant lovers out there that just need the. Yeah, just zoom in, like, hi. If there's <laughs> this will be a, a commercial, yeah. I'm a Leo. I like <laughs> I like wrong, long walks on the beach. Occasional good novels. Good I'm a good listener. I'm a good learner. If you would like to fund my life, Head uh, yeah. I'm here for you. <laughs> you hit him with that smile. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. Hold on. Thank <laughs> you.